everybody! Welcome back to Baking Music with Kate. This episode is about Diego Ortiz and Neapolitan pizza. Quickly, I'm going to let you know that I do not speak Italian and there are some words in this video that have given me a lot of trouble. I will do my best, but my apologies in advance. I will add titles to the names or words that I most certainly will trip over so that you won't have to guess what I'm trying to pronounce. Now, let's dig in. Diego Ortiz was born in Toledo, Spain in 1510 and died in Rome in 1570. Few facts are known about his life, but the ones we do know mainly focus on his career. From all accounts, Ortiz seemed to have spent most of his working life in Naples and was widely respected. We know he was in Naples starting from at least 1553, where he had accompanied the Spanish Viceroy as a man-at-arms and was also appointed as Kapellmeister at the Viceroy's court. However, because of his mention in Della Pratica Musica as a true Neapolitan in 1601, many believe that Ortiz was in Naples far earlier. Probably Diego Ortiz's biggest claim to fame and what I'm performing out of today is his treatise Trattata de Glossas. I'm not going to do a deep dive on this treatise today. To go through all that information would take a whole other video. What I will say is that this treatise is divided into two books. It is a tutor on glossas, also known in English as divisions, and that these glossas are composed on ostinato bases, or known in English as ground bases. Now, in my Human Soul Cake video, I talked a lot about the possible connection between the composer and the baked good. Today, I'm more interested in drawing the parallels between the actual piece of music and the food of the day. When I started thinking about how the music is composed and started researching more about pizza, it kind of hit me that these two seemingly very different things are actually delightfully similar. Let me explain why. I'm going to start this explanation with a brief history of pizza. Turns out that pizza is a very old food, like 3rd century Macedonia old. The first time we see written evidence referencing pizza is a document from Gatea, not far from Naples, from 997 AD. But the pizza that we know and love today wasn't exactly like the pizza from that time period. From what I read, it seems that for a long time, pizza was really just a word in the Neapolitan dialect for flatbread. In other parts of the Italy, that word is focaccia. This means that pizza could really reference anything from a plain flatbread to one with olive oil and salt to something with spices, meat, and cheeses, depending on availability of ingredients. We start to see the development of pizza as we recognize it in the mid-1700s when the Italians embraced in their cuisine the previously thought deadly food brought to Italy by the Spanish, the tomato. The author of Inventing the Pizzeria, Antonio Mazzazzi, maintains that most modern pizza stems from Neapolitan pizza. He's not necessarily saying that the people of Naples invented pizza, that specific knowledge is really lost to history, but what he is saying is that they developed and refined it to become the food we know today. So this brings up two questions. Let's answer the first right now. What are the characteristics of Neapolitan pizza? I'm going to give a condensed version here, but in the description box below, I'll have some links to the Asocian Verace Pizza Neapolitana that you can check out for the full description. From what I've read, to make the authentic dough, you only need four ingredients. Double zero wheat flour, Neapolitan or fresh wheat brews, yeast, water, and salt. It can be kneaded by hand or with a low speed mixer, but must be formed by hand without a rolling pin. The toppings are simple with pureed San Marzano tomatoes and mozzarella cheese, either a fior de lait or mozzarella de bufala. Fresh basil and extra virgin olive oil are then added on top when the pizza is finished baking. The pizza must be baked for 60 to 90 seconds at a temperature of between 800 and 1000 degrees Fahrenheit in a stone oven with a wood fire. This whole description sums up why I can only make Neapolitan style pizza in my own kitchen. I do use a pizza stone, but my gas oven can only go to about 550 degrees Fahrenheit, which means I need to bake the pizza for longer than 90 seconds. The mozzarella cheese I use is whatever I can buy in bulk from Costco. And if I bring one more type of flour into the house, my fridge probably won't have any room left for regular food. I am, however, a stickler for using San Marzano tomatoes for my sauce, stretching and tossing the dough to form the base, and topping the cooked pizzas with 
extra virgin olive oil, fresh basil, and I add a bit of fleur de sel. The pizza dough recipe and baking process that I use is from Ken Forkish's book, Flour, Water, Salt, Yeast. I love this recipe. The process is super clear and makes incredible pizza. I'll add a link to the book in my description if you are interested. The second question, of course, is how does Neapolitan pizza connect to Richard Carter Segunda or Diego Ortiz? There are a few ways. Neapolitan pizza and Diego Ortiz were both popular fixtures of Naples in their own time period, with some Spanish influence. Another way is socioeconomic. Ricciardo's ostinato base is Pesmezzo Moderno, which is actually a folk dance popular with the lower class strata of southern Italy in the 16th century. However, there is some evidence that the upper class strata also took part in these folk dance traditions. Likewise, pizza in the 18th century was known as a very cheap food that both stratas enjoyed eating. As I mentioned before, the biggest connection for me is how they're built. I don't want to turn this into a music lesson, but the ostinato bass is a short repeating melodic pattern that serves as the structural foundation of a piece of music. In the 16th century, musicians improvised divisions or for our purposes, glosses to these bases, each time creating a new piece of music for people to listen or dance to. What Ortiz did was create and then write down these glosses, preserving these pieces instead of letting them fade away in people's memories. So we have them today. If you took away the glossus, the piece of music you'd be left with would be pretty basic. Likewise, if you took away the ostinato bass, the glossus would be without structure. Together, they create a satisfying piece of music to perform, listen, and dance to. Pizza is very similar. If you separated the components of a pizza, you'd have flatbread and cheese with sauce and garnish. If you took away the toppings, you would have a very basic flatbread. If you took away the flatbread, you wouldn't have a uniting structure for your toppings. Together, they create a satisfying, nourishing meal. So why don't you grab your favorite kind of pizza and join me for this performance of Diego Ortiz's Ricciardo Segunda. My ending thoughts for this video is this, that food and music have the same type of magic. They are truly universal languages, an art form that anyone around the world can enjoy, create, and share. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Baking Music with Kate, and if you haven't already, click that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. Bye until next time.